Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock. We'll enter the company's financial information and capital structure into my Excel model. Then we determine whether the stock is buy or sell. At the end, we calculate and analyze the financial ratios. I am doing this with you throughout the entire video, so it's like we're doing it together. Make sure to leave a comment because I answer all comments. The company we're going to look at is Xerox, and they sell print and digital document products and services in more than 160 countries. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $3.9 billion. So that's the value of the company according to the stock market. Let's see where they're trading at, 1819. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and then discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And now I'm going to pull the actual free cash flows. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So it's a cash that's left over to pay the investors. Let's get their net income. That's a profit and loss on the income statement. And we also need the revenue, which are the sales on the income statement. They had one year of negative free cash flow, but the other years they had pretty high free cash flow. And one year of negative net income. And their sales are decreasing every year, which is not good. Let's look at a capital structure. They pay $105 million of interest on their debt. Let's see how much debt they have. Current debt of $1 billion and long-term debt of $3 billion. So they pay 2.5% interest on the debt. Interest payments are tax deductible, so let's get their effective tax rate. We'll go back to the income statement. Income before tax of $822 million. Income tax of $179 million. Their effective tax rate is 22%, so the cost of debt is a little under 2%. Let's get the beta so we can figure out the cost of equity. The beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. Never a beta of 1.61, so the stock moves about one and a half times the market. Let's go back to the balance sheet to get the current assets. That's $6 billion. We need to calculate the current ratio. And current assets are $2.7 billion of cash, $1 billion of net receivables, $694 million of inventory, and $113 million of other. Let's get the current liabilities. That's $3.4 billion. And that's a billion of debt, a billion of accounts payable, seven million of taxes payable, 297 million of crude liabilities, 158 million of deferred revenues, and 212 million of other. Stockholders' equity, the value of the company according to the balance sheet, that's 5.8 billion. That's equal to assets minus liabilities. That's 429 million of common stock, 6.3 billion of retained earnings and negative 3.6 billion of accumulated other comprehensive income. Let's go back to the income statement and get their operating income. That's 1.1 billion. Let's look at a capital structure, 42% debt, cost of debt 2%, 58% equity, cost of equity 14.7%. The WAC is 9.26%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. That's here in blue. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. That's here in green. We get a value of the company of $5.2 billion. We divide that by 214 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $24. They're trading at $18, so they're trading at a 25% discount. So it's a buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at $34, so they're even higher than me. Let's see where the stock has been trading the past few years. So it was trading much higher before coronavirus. It's been cut in half pretty much, and it hasn't really come up. So investors just don't feel the future of this company is going to be too strong. Let's look at the financial ratios. An amazing PE, a great price of sales, and a great price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income or shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at three, so investors are paying $3 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. 
And to calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, there are 0.4. So investors are paying 40 cents for $1 revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, there are 0.7, so investors are paying 70 cents for $1 book value. A book value per share of 27 indicates that if the company went bankrupt and liquidated its assets, paid off its liabilities, it would have $27 left over to pay each shareholder, even though each share is worth $18, so the company is worth more in bankruptcy than active. They have a good current ratio, good interest coverage ratio, and a good ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can cover their current debts and payables. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%. They're at 23%. So they're providing a good return to the equity holders. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they can easily cover their interest payments. And the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. These companies are in the same industry as Xerox, Accenture, Fleet Corps, IBM, Science Applications, Wipro, who's an Indian company, and Xerox. And if Xerox is in green, their ratio is better than the average in the industry. If they're in red, they're worse than the average. So they have the best price to earnings, price to sales, and price to book of all the companies. Their current ratio is better than average. Their ROE, although good, is lower than the average. The average in the industry is 27%. They're at 23%. In terms of debt, they're about average. And they're much smaller than the average of market cap. The average is $48 billion. They're $3.9 billion. So it seems like a good investment. Let me know what you think. Make sure to leave a comment. I'll be sure to answer. Thanks for watching.